Dreams don't die. And as long as I'm alive and in command of the Andromeda, neither will the Commonwealth. You want to restore the Commonwealth? I think it's my duty to try. But I need help. I need a crew. Us? Well, I was still uh, shooting Hercules at the time, living in New Zealand. And we were on uh, season seven of that show. And Universal wanted to go three more years on it, but I'd reach a total burnout phase. And I just wanted to do something different. As much as I love the show, and I know I made a lot of fans very upset, but um, uh, the show's still near and dear to me, but I, I just need to do something different. And Majel Roddenberry uh, actually got a hold of me through uh, my manager, um, Eric Gold, and my agents at ICM, and they said, look, you know, Major wants to talk to you about this idea she has for a, a, a it's not really a spin-off of Star Trek, but it's still from the same guy, you know, Gene Roddenberry. And right away I was like, sure, I'll listen to what she's got to say. And she gave me a call in New Zealand and uh, she explained the idea to me and they sent me a bunch of different scripts. They said, look, he had three different shows here that, he's not got a number of shows, but they had three different shows that she thought I'd be right for. Um, I was immediately drawn to two of them. And I said, is there any way to take the, the best ideas from these two shows and merge them into one show? And uh, she said, well, sure, you know? And so we started talking from there and just one thing led to another. And I had a contract signed, sealed, and delivered with uh, the last three months of Hercules still on the table to shoot. So, uh, you know, from an actor standpoint, it's comfortable. I had a job waiting for me already. And, uh, you know, the rest is kind of history. We started right away. We started casting right away. It took nine months. Uh, from the time Hercules finished to the first day shooting up here. And uh, I was in part of the, pro the whole casting process. I, I got to meet everybody from, uh, you know, who, who we're going to get for Becca, who we're going to get for Tyr, who we're going to get for Rev Bem, and for, for Harper, for Trans, for, for, for Andromeda, the ship itself. You know, I was there from the beginning to sort of just look at all the different tapes and meet the actors. And I actually did screen tests with a couple of the characters. And uh, it, was, it was a fun, it was an interesting process for me. It was fun to be... There, at, I mean, I was at the beginning of Hercules, but I had nothing to do with the development of it. This show, I, I all of a sudden was thrust right into it with all the other cooks in the kitchen. And uh, it was fun. It was an interesting road. And then we got here to that very first day shooting. According to my calculations, we have been frozen in time for over 300 years. 300 years? Uh, to meet with Robert Hewitt Wolf, who became, you know, the original showrunner, as who is his Bible is what the show. He took the works of Gene Roddenberry, but you know he had to elaborate on it. We had to have something to build from because Gene's uh, entire idea of the show was really he had a script for one of the shows. With he had he had two other shows that he liked the character Captain Dylan Hunt, and um, they did a pilot in one of them with an actor by the name of John Saxon back in 1969 or 70. They shot that. And nobody picked it up. I have the pilot. I have it. It's in my collection back at home, so I've seen the pilot. And you know, it's kind of neat to see, you know, the ideas they had then and where we're taking it now. And uh, Robert took it, you know, in a bigger and broader way, which is good. You know, you got to look at a show. You don't look at a show for. You can't show the entire idea of a show in one episode. Unfortunately, that's what networks and everybody else wants you to do now when a new show's out there because they don't give shows a chance anymore. You have to look at a show and say, okay. What is it to get from episode one to episode 100? You need a five-year plan with the show before you start it. And I think some writers and studio people get, let that get away from them. And they don't, they've sort of lost that focus. And now if a show's not a hit right away, they just pull it off and they don't give it a chance. We have no patience anymore for anything. And uh, shows like, like MASH, most certainly Cheers, in today's world would have been canceled within the first season. You know, <laughs> they wouldn't have given a chance. Seinfeld wouldn't have lasted. You know, but uh, the, yeah, they had somebody behind those shows say, look, this is a really good show. You know, so it still happens today. It was, it was actually, I remember very well. It was very funny because I remember um, I said for my character, I said, why can't Dylan Hunt have a, a vice, a hobby, a pastime, something he does and he just wants to be alone and think, I'm a big golfer, I'm a big basketball player. So I said, let me have one of those two things. I like to have both of them. That why can't I have some old putter from Bobby Jones era, you know, here's thousands of years later, but I have this putter, this game that originated on the planet Earth. And uh, I, I'm in my office just putting away, doing this game. And I think you have funny conversations out of that as I'm talking to people and this is how I think. And this Because I did it as a, I still do. I still go play basketball, you know, I'll go on my own and just shoot free throw to free throw. But it's sort of a, it's sort of a, a way for me to sort of zen out and just have my own time and think. 
and uh, they wouldn't give me the golf, they gave me the basketball. So my, the very first thing we shot was with Dylan Hunt and myself and Keith Hamilton Cobb, who played Tier Anasazi, playing basketball. I'm, I'm trying to teach him the game. It wasn't the first scene of an order, but it was the first scene that they shot. We get on the stage, and Keith is 6'5", he's incredibly ripped, and um, he couldn't play basketball. <laughs> Life freaking depended on it. And I started laughing. And he said, and he says, what, because I'm a 6'5 black man from New York, I should be able to play basketball? I said, yes, you should. So I'm sorry. As built as he is, and you think he's this big athlete, but you know, Keith was always, he was always a very uh, artistic, theatrical kind of guy who just happened to like working out. But he never played sports growing up. So it was kind of interesting that, you know, that's all I did growing up was play sports. You know, he was doing the arts, and I was just, you know, trying to be a jock and pick up girls. So that was my job as a kid. And, you know, so it was funny. It was a funny, it, I just, I'll always remember that. It was, Hilarious. But it was, you know, the nerves were there, the excitement was there. To, it was a buzz to be on a new set. Uh, of course, you know, none of us knew each other. Nobody knew anybody. And, well, the crew did. The crews worked together. Half the crew, actually, more than half the crew had worked on um, X Files before they came over to us, and many other things, of course. So I was confident that I had a great crew, because that show was an awesome looking show. And, uh, you know, to pile into it and start doing this, uh, this new series. You know, everybody comes in, who knows, you know? And they're, and they're thinking about me, too. They're going, and I think I have a pretty good reputation in Hollywood, and people know that I'm not a jerk, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm, I'm pretty fair to everybody. I'm, I'm always willing to hear everybody's opinion on things. And uh, so, you know, again, the set, people were, it was like this generic kindness. Was, you know, it's, it's breaking ice getting to know each other. But I remember Gordon Verhul, our, our DP, um, very first scene, uh, you know, I said all my dialogue, and he goes, wow, a lead actor actually knows his dialogue. He's <laughs> because I have been on shows where guys just come on, they're looking for your cue card, or they're just like, what's my line? Just give me my line or something, you know? Because they don't want to spend that time doing the homework. And, uh, you know, I grew up, I'm old school. I, I, I study very hard, I work very hard with the writers, and, uh, you know, I think coming into a new show, if I'm the guy they built the show around, it's important for the that number one actor on the call sheet to set an example and to me it's like look i'm willing to do the work and i know it's infectious for everybody else and uh the other actors come on and do the work too and we we've, we've also had a good good relationship that way on the show which is good we have fun our blockings are very you know off the wall uh, i know when new actors come on the show to guest star they're like going you know because we're changing stuff and we're doing this and they, it kind of blows them away for a second but then they catch on very quickly and they love it and they like they like the relaxed set which we have here you know i'm on my 12th straight year of one hour television and knock on wood you know i've been very lucky to have that kind of that kind of continuous work and it becomes a factory in some way it, it's just it's you know you check in and you check out and you know, I get home at night, and I try to spend time with the family, but, you know, I'm still, once the kids are in bed, I'm, I'm studying, I'm looking at the lines, I'm looking at the next script, and the next script after that, and I'm making notes for the next day on the set. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of the things start blending together. I'm in there for the day we're shooting, but once I finish that day, I tend to just forget stuff. I mean, I, I can look back at an episode and remember the episode, but I won't remember the name. I mean, there's, there, there are certain turning points uh, if you wanted me to throw out a couple names of, of, of scripts, I mean, there were certain turning points that uh, I knew the show was going to head in a different direction. One was uh, uh, Ouroboros, which I thought was a great episode. I loved the episode. It's Trance's character changed completely. Um, I, I just thought it brought my character into a different light, that he became less military, he became more... I think, I think there was just, you know, it's just, I liked the feel of the episode. I, I liked all the different stuff that was going on with all the characters. Everybody was involved, everybody had a story arc. And uh, it was just a fun episode, but it's, it's hard. I mean, it's hard to say that is my all-time favorite, but it's one of them. You know, there's another one called uh, uh, Home Fires, which we just called Home Fries. And, uh, but we liked it. it was, you know, I, I think I liked that because we actually left the studio. We shot on location for a couple of days, which we never do. So that was like, woohoo, big deal. But um, boy. It, it's you know it's hard to pick one because there's always a couple out of each season that that I really think stand out that really that I really enjoy. Whoa!
100 episodes, guys. Not many shows get to that mark, so I just want to say thank you for everybody's hard work. 100 episodes, a millions of laughs. I'm stuck with bozos like this to work with every day in front of the camera. <laughs> but thank God you guys are here to make us all look really, really good. God bless and thank you all. Yeah. I'm proud of the fact that uh, we got five years out of it, you know? Um, I think that this show is a damn good show, and I think it's one of the best kept secrets on TV because we have not done a very good job of promoting the show. We just haven't. I, I don't know why, but the studio never did. Uh, and it's unfortunate because it's a good show. And for the lack of promotional advertising, marketing of this series, and for it to get enough viewership and enough you know, people behind it to make it go a fifth year um, is amazing, you know? So, you know, I'm proud of the fact that I've had two shows. One goes seven years, one goes five years. I mean, it's, it's, if it's something to do with me, then, then that's great. Maybe that's a small part of it, but I just think I've been very lucky to be part of a team and a process that just, for whatever reasons, the stars lined up the right way, and uh, I got a cruise at it because most shows don't make it past the first episode. They just don't, you know? I mean, the casualty rate is unbelievable in Hollywood. I mean, it's something like 3% of shows make it to five seasons. It's pretty low. You know, when you, think, you look at all the shows you see on TV and you go, oh, that was on TV. You know, you think, you think of a Lost in Space and shows that were sci-fi back in the 60s, they went two, three seasons max. The original Star Trek went three seasons, you know, and it was done, you know, and it's, uh, you know, it's pretty amazing, especially in today's world where they're looking to cut, you know, cut cost everywhere. And this whole, you know, out of necessity reality, reality TV was born. Unfortunately, it's become a big hit with people, but I, that's a whole different direction we can go. I, I, I'm not a big fan of it. It's a very well done show. I, I, I think the combination of the cast, uh, you know, we've got three uh, very talented actresses who all happen to be, well, actually, we have four now, because we added a fourth this year in season five, um, that are all very hot as well. <laughs> that doesn't hurt. You know, um, there's a reason they put the girl next to the Ford pickup truck. You know, <laughs> when they're selling a truck, there's still a hot babe there. Uh, call it what you want, uh, but that's there's still that reality is still alive and well. And you know, and they're all very good on top of it, which which is key. Um, I like my relationship with with the guys in the show as well. I love my relationship with uh, Gordon Wolvett's character Harper. I think it's a great relationship, and I like most especially this season, what's happened with my relationship with Rade, where, where he goes through major changes from season four to season five. And uh, it's, it's, there's a rivalry, there's, there's drama, there's conflict, and that's always fun to play as an actor. You know, it's just the audience, it gives them something more to sort of hang on to because I think people can relate to it. And I think people watch the shows for different reasons. Some watch for me, some watch to watch trans, some watch, I mean, it's, I, I think when you've got such a wide variety of people in the show, uh, my ego's not that big to think that, you know, oh, they're watching because of me. You know, it's a combination of everybody involved in the show, and I think that's what uh, has helped make the show what it is. Okay. Home sweet home. Visual effects get better every single year. You know, we're in, in the house now with our with our uh, FX crew, and it's when it's right there, not only do you save money, but that money can be transferred to making better visual effects. And we've got a library from season one, two, and three where they can take from, and it costs them a fraction to change them a little bit and move things around a little bit. And uh, it's just it's just a beautiful show. I mean, I, I, I don't like watching it on tape. I like to watch it on the DVD, on you know, the big screen at home, and you just go, wow. I mean, I don't go up there enough. To, to, I tell those guys how great they are, but I don't go upstairs enough to tell them how great they are, and I should, because that's just as big a star of the show as anybody else is. The visuals are awesome. Really, the ultimate ending was to make it look like everybody died. And it did look like everybody but Dylan died. Um, I think that was sort of a safety net for the studio in case the show didn't get picked up for a fifth year. I always knew it was going to. I know it became posturing between the two powers to be. There's a, a Canadian firm called Can West and then the American firm Tribune, which is sharing the costs on the show. Uh, Tribune had the basically the final say if a show is going to continue or not for the full five years. Can West didn't want to do it. So it became this big, uh, it became a big posturing thing. It was high noon. They were both at the end of the dusty street in this western and ready to point the guns at each other. Uh, it came down to the last minute, but I always believed the show would get picked up for a fifth year. 
And uh, there was just a lot of, you know, all these lawyers going back and forth, you know, making money and wasting everybody else's time and money. And finally, they just said, yeah, it's going to go a fifth year. So um, I think the ending was just sort of put there to, to make people think that, you know, this is a place a show could end on. Because it, the last two-parter was a beautiful show. I, I, th I thought they were amazing. I loved the ending with the white doors opening up and the music going and stuff. And it was just, it was very operatic and very just, uh, it's where I want the show to be more. And I think this year we're doing that. I've already seen the first three episodes in complete form for the f season five. And I like this season. This is my favorite season so far because the characters are so different in terms of uh, where their personalities are now and, and uh, the selfishness and the individuality that's going on with each character now. And, and Dylan is, is also each of, here's a guy whose life's been so military and depending on the whole, you know, and now he's just saying, screw it. He's depending only on himself and he's not putting up with it anymore. He doesn't have patience for it anymore. He's far more sarca sarcastic this year than he's ever been. And uh, I like it. It's fun. When I um, get uh, episodes that sort of seem impossible to me uh, or I want to fight against because I don't think my character would do that, I also have to take a step back and go, why am I saying that? Am I afraid of looking stupid? Am I afraid of not being able to pull it off? Am I afraid of failure? Am I afraid of... And then I realized those are the exact same reasons why I got involved in this profession to begin with. Was, they, they, they just did a, a little stunt back there. It's my body double getting hurt while I'm sitting here talking to you. Um, I think it's important as an actor, because uh, an acting coach told me years ago, when you stop getting the butterflies, when you stop getting nervous, when you, all these kinds of things. And it actually was repeated to me years ago by Anthony Quinn, who I worked with on, on Hercules back in 93 and 94, uh, 1993 and 1994. Um, when you stop getting nervous and it's time to stop being in the business, uh, you have to keep testing yourself and challenging yourself. And I like the fact that we've got, we've got a group of directors now that have been with the show for five years. In the last two seasons, we've really narrowed it down to those five or six guys that come and do all 22 episodes. And they come in and try different things. Because, you know, we're here most of the time. There's only so many different ways you can shoot this ship. And I like the fact that I've noticed it because I've directed myself. I, I notice what they're, I mean, they're doing their homework. They're coming up with ways to challenge themselves visually. And that, in turn, challenges everybody else on the crew because now they got to light it a different way. I've lit, this, I've lit it this way for five years. Why would I do it that way, you know? And uh, the stunt they just did right now, which I hope you guys had a camera down there to watch, huh? But um, you'll get a copy of it. We'll, we'll, send you, we'll send you the rough cuts. And uh, it's, uh, it's always fun to be, to be tested. That's why in the off season, I look for something different to do as an actor as well. Because when you're on a show, any, any show, I don't care if it's a sitcom or a show like this, if you're in your fourth, fifth, and sixth year, it's easy to fall into a pattern. It's easy to just sort of sit back and let it coast. And I think it's important that you get yourself, you know, get yourself a little kick in the ass every once in a while, because you need it. I'm still not completely comfortable watching myself. Um, like a lot of actors may feel that way. I, and being one of the producers on the show now too, I mean, I look at the director's cut, and I looked at the producer's cut, and then I, you know, I make notes on those cuts. Then I looked at a lot cut, and then I'll look at some of the visual effects that are going on. I'll see the show a lot in different stages and see how they're piecing it together and giving them my two cents. And then when the final show does come out and I see it you know, color corrected and visuals and sound and everything's in there, I'm always blown away. And it's very easy for me to remove myself from being that person playing that part. And I watch a show like a fan watches a show. I get into it. And I watch it, and I think that's a good sign, that it's compelling enough for me to watch myself and not think that that's me. It's, it's, I just did a DVD thing for Hercules a couple months back with Michael Hurst, who played my sidekick on the show, and we sat there, and I hadn't seen these shows in seven, eight years, nine years, and we sat there together, and it was just such a surreal feeling. Because I know that's me, and I remember being there, but it's like I don't remember being there. It was very, very odd. And so when, when I come on screen, and the final product, it's different than when I look at it in the early stages of the director's cut and producer's cut, which I'm probably more critical of my performances. And I'll always say, is there another take? Because I sucked in that one. Is there another angle? Is there another, you know? So I'm always fighting for something just a little bit, a little bit differently when, you know, when, when it's coming on those early stages. But uh, uh, 
I think once again, you can't just sit back. I think you always got to strive to make yourself better. I mean, probably my biggest uh, cheerleader and my biggest acting coach is my wife, who really should be an acting coach. She's the one that will look an episode, and she's far more critical of things than I am. And I mean that in a good way, because you know, she's a New Yorker. And she will, she will basically bust my balls. And she'll say, you know what, you, you, just, you just said the lines in that scene. You know, and she'll be right. She goes, you really could have given more there. You could have done this different. You could have done that. And she comes up with like five different alternative ways of doing it. I look at her and go, why would you unset that day? You know? So um, I have her actually run lines with me at, at, at night before I come the next day. And, and I listen to what she has to say. You know? And she's the one who remind me to take chances. You know? And I know another old acting coach like that, too, about taking chances and says, who cares if you look stupid? Who cares? And I grew up my whole life being the big jock in high school and, you know, and the guy on the college campus thought I was a big stud getting all the girls, whatever. And, and you know, I didn't, I, I fell into this weird sort of uh, safety net that I didn't want to go out of because, gee, I might look like an idiot. But as I have gotten older, I just, I, I was 27 years old and I sort of hit an epiphany for me where I kind of went, I don't care. I really don't care what people think about me. I don't care if I make myself look stupid. Why not do, try something different in your life? And it, to me, it just helps you grow, especially, most especially as an actor. Don't be afraid. Take chances. You know?